Ocean liners. For over a century, they ruled the seas, transporting immigrants and travelers across the globe. They were powerful, fast, and luxurious. Each of them represented the pride of a nation. Today's cruise ships are not built to the same standards of strength and speed, nor for the same purpose, which makes these classic liners such a gift and rarity when one is preserved. You might be surprised by the ships on my list, and even by the order in which they are placed. We'll begin with my lesser favorites, and work our way to my number one. Now let's get into it. Number 10. SS Kron Prince Wilhelm Launched the 30th of March 1901 at the AG Vulcan shipyard in Stettin, Germany. Named after Germany's crown prince, the ship was arguably the most luxurious liner at sea during the first part of the decade and the interiors were a revival of the German architecture of the Old World. The ship operated the North Atlantic run, setting off from Bremerhaven. SS Kronprinz Wilhelm suffered damages on her maiden voyage when a rogue wave slammed against the forward superstructure. That didn't put an end to her service, though. In 1902, she captured the coveted blue ribbon and continued sailing until she was commissioned into the Imperial German Navy in 1914 to be used as an auxiliary cruiser. She was captured by the Americans in 1917 and renamed USS von Steuben after the German hero of the American Revolution. She survived throughout the war, returning briefly to passenger service under American control in 1919. She was sent to the breakers in Boston in 1923, where she was subsequently scrapped. Number nine, Queen Elizabeth II. Launched the 20th of September 1967 at John Brown Shipyards in Clydebank, Scotland. She was named after the original RMS Queen Elizabeth, but many people mistakenly believe she is named after Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, simply because the ship has the numerical 2 added to the name. She was built to replace the aging queens of the Cunard line and directly compete for luxury service against other popular ships like SS United States and SS France. Her space-age design was quite a departure from anything Cunard had done in the past and was their last-ditch effort to modernize the company and save it from foundering. After the later addition of balcony cabins, a casino, and a pub, the QE2 became a major success. She served as a troop ship during the Falklands War in early 1982 and became an icon for Britain. She continued her traditional transatlantic run throughout her life, occasionally taking part in cruises, until she was finally retired from service in November of 2008. She now operates as a very successful floating hotel and nightlife center in Dubai, offering history tours as well as fine dining. Number 8. SS Rex Launched the 1st of August 1931 at G. Ansaldo and Company of Genoa, Italy, she was named Rex, the Latin translation for King. She competed for the Blue Ribbon and captured the title in 1933, earning Italy the prestige of having a worthy challenger to the popular liners of the North Atlantic run. While other liners at the time were being designed with Art Deco interiors, SS Rex continued a traditional classic style. This was a daring move by the architects because liners with classical interiors were often seen as outdated but her passengers loved the modern take on the classic style. Rex operated the transatlantic run until the outbreak of World War II when she and her sister ship operated Mediterranean cruises. She was bombed by Allied forces on the 8th of September, 1944. Italy was part of the Axis forces, and so to prevent the SS Rex from being used against the Allies, she was sunk. Her remains still lie near the Bay of Koper, Slovenia. Number seven. RMS Queen Mary II launched the 21st of March 2003 at the Chantier de Atlantique shipyard in France. She was named after the original RMS Queen Mary, and as a gesture by the Royal Mail, she was given the honorary title RMS, which stands for Royal Mail Ship, a title which her predecessors often had. Queen Mary II has the distinction of being the largest ocean liner ever constructed and is also currently the world's only ocean liner still in service. Her interiors were designed in a modern take on Art Deco style, a nod to the original Queen Mary. Despite her size, she is capable of a maximum speed of just over 30 knots and can maintain a traditional cruising speed of 28 knots. 
though she rarely meets those speeds today. She succeeded the QE2 as the flagship of the Cunard Line in 2004 when she entered service, and still operates traditional transatlantic crossings in addition to occasional destination cruises. Number 6. SS France The original SS France was launched the 20th of September 1910. She was built by Chantier de Atlantique, the same company that would launch the Queen Mary II almost a century later. She was nicknamed Versailles of the Atlantic because her interiors were designed with the Baroque Revival architectural style, reminiscent of the famous French Palace of Versailles. Built as a direct competitor to Cunard's Lusitania and Mauritania, SS France never captured the Blue Ribbon, but she was just as fast as other transatlantic liners and impressed everyone with her ornate style, which was consistent throughout the vessel. During the First World War, she was converted into an armed cruiser but was too large and burnt too much coal, so she operated as a hospital ship until 1917, when she was converted into a troop ship. But her war service was cut short by an engine room explosion. After the war, she resumed passenger service, but the expenses of her operation, combined with the Great Depression, had dealt the final blow to the beautiful liner. She was withdrawn from service in 1932 and scrapped just three years later. Number five. RMS Aquitania. This one surprised even me. I knew Aquitania would be on my list, but I didn't realize she would be as high up as number five. Anyway, she was launched the 21st of April, 1914 at John Brown Shipyards of Clydebank, Scotland, and was built to be a larger sister ship to Lusitania and Mauritania. She quickly earned the nickname, The Ship Beautiful, due to her attractive interiors and clean symmetrical design on the outside. Soon after entering service, she was requisitioned as a troop ship in the First World War, surviving and continuing passenger service afterwards. She would again be called to service as a troop ship in the Second World War, sailing alongside her larger, faster running mates, Queen Mary and Queen Elizabeth. Both wars had taken their toll on the lovely lady, running her ragged. Too expensive to restore to passenger service, Aquitania was scrapped in the year 1950. Aquitania was the last four-funneled ocean liner in existence. Number four, RMS Oceanic. Launched the 14th of January, 1899 at the Harland and Wolfe shipyards in Belfast, Northern Ireland. She was the second ship to carry the name Oceanic, and upon completion, she was the first ship to exceed the length of the Great Eastern, although she didn't surpass the tonnage. While the White Star Line had initially intended for her to compete for the Blue Ribbon, they had suddenly decided instead to focus on the luxury of the ship. With a maximum speed of 21 knots, she was still respectably fast and was virtually without vibration. In August of 1914, she was commissioned by the British Admiralty as an armed cruiser. During the First World War, however, due to a navigation error that put her off course, she ran aground just a month into her wartime service off the coast of the Scottish Highlands. Due to a ruptured hull, she was abandoned there. All that remains of her is a propeller and her lifeboat number six, which is kept at the Shetland Museum in Lerwick. Number three, RMS Queen Elizabeth. Launched in 1938 at John Brown Shipyards in Clydebank, Scotland, Queen Elizabeth was named after the consort of King George VI. Cunard had always intended to build two ships of great size and speed in order to accomplish Samuel Cunard's dream of a weekly transatlantic crossing. RMS Queen Elizabeth was barely completed in the year 1940 when she was immediately requisitioned as a troop ship in World War II. She participated in Operation Bolero and sailed all over the world transporting Allied troops. She and Queen Mary had a bounty placed over them by Hitler himself, and they spent six years of the war avoiding the torpedoes of enemy submarines. Despite her years of wartime service, she didn't have her maiden voyage until the 16th of October, 1946. She was a very successful liner. Her interiors, though still Art Deco style, more closely matched the streamlined modern look of the 1940s and early 50s. In her final years, she occasionally did cruises to the Canary Islands, but was retired from service in 1968, being sold off and converted into a floating hotel in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, then being sold again for conversion into a floating university. 
During her conversion, she caught fire and sank in Hong Kong Harbor. She was scrapped by the Japanese Navy just a few months later. Between 1940 and 2004, RMS Queen Elizabeth was the largest ocean liner ever built, succeeded in size only by Queen Mary II. Number 2. RMS Mauritania Launched on the 20th of September 1906 at the shipyards of Swan Hunter and Wiggum Richardson in Northumberland, England. Mauritania was named after the Roman province and was designed as a sister ship to RMS Lusitania. Both ships were the first liners to use the new steam turbine technology invented by Charles Parsons, and the first ocean liners to have quadruple screw propellers. The steam turbines were still somewhat primitive, and because they were directly attached to the propeller shafts, the two ships suffered vibration issues. But that didn't hinder the incredible 28 knot maximum speed that Mauritania could achieve. Not only was she the largest ocean liner at the time, but she was also the fastest, capturing the blue ribbon and holding on to it for 19 years. RMS Mauritania served troop ship duty in the First World War and continued passenger service long after. She was the flagship of the Cunard Line up until her retirement in 1934. She was scrapped alongside her famous competitor, RMS Olympic, in 1935. And finally everyone, we have come to number one. With great pride, I announce that my favorite ocean liner is RMS Queen Mary. Launched the 26th of September 1934 at John Brown Shipyards of Clydebank, Scotland. She was going to be the world's largest ocean liner, but before completion, her famous rival SS Normandy would increase her tonnage and exceed Queen Mary's design size. RMS Queen Mary was the first ocean liner to be designed with a dedicated kosher kitchen and synagogue for her Jewish passengers. And in the years leading up to the Second World War, she carried thousands of refugees across the Atlantic to the safety of the United States. RMS Queen Mary proved that she was the fastest ocean liner in the world, wresting the blue ribbon away from SS Normandy and holding on to it for 14 years. She was converted into a troop ship for World War II, sailing 540,000 nautical miles across the globe on more than 75 voyages. She was the first ship ever to be capable of transporting whole divisions of soldiers at a time. She still holds the record of carrying 16,683 people on a single voyage. During her troop ship days, she helped win the first battle at El Alamein. She led the efforts of Operation Bolero, and Prime Minister Winston Churchill and his allied war officials would plan the final battles of the war, including the storming of Normandy's beaches, right there aboard the Queen Mary. After the war, Queen Mary continued as a successful liner, although in the 1960s, with more passengers traveling by airplane, Queen Mary had to be retired from duty. When she was sold to the city of Long Beach in 1967 to be converted to a floating hotel and museum, she was, at the time, the most famous ocean liner in the world. She currently lives out her retirement in Long Beach Harbor, undergoing repairs at this very moment. She is the last remaining transatlantic ocean liner built prior to World War II and remains an important historic artifact of the Jewish diaspora and of the war. Well folks, that was my top 10 list of favorite ocean liners. This list may have surprised some of you, as many people's lists often include ships like Titanic, Normandy, and SS United States. I will admit, Olympic and Titanic almost made it onto the list, but Olympic would have had to be number 11 and Titanic would be number 12. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe for more content. Thank you for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this content, consider supporting my channel by either signing up for my Patreon or to my YouTube memberships. That way you can get exclusive perks in return. Links are in the description below. Thank you and I'll see you next time.